The amount of JavaScript that you send over the wire from your application, otherwise known as the bundle size, is the most important factor for determining the performance of your application and the experience of your users. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin. Today on Demos with Angular, we're going to be diving deep into bundle budgets and application performance. By adding a budget to your Angular application, you can get warnings or errors when your application exceeds a certain size. There's a couple ways of doing this. You can do this based on different chunks of your application, or you can do it based on the initial payload size. That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Let's get started. As always, we are starting with a brand new blank CLI project. So you can see normal CLI configuration here. Now today we're looking at bundle sizes and the budgets feature. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a very kind of basic bundle. We're gonna take a look at the size and then we're gonna go ahead and add things and see how we can control the size of our bundle uh, using these budgets. And so what I, I find it's gonna be really helpful to do is if we do an ng build dash dash prod. Um, and uh, although you should never do this in production, I'm actually gonna do an ng serve dash dash prod just so this is going to take longer than normal you should not use it for testing you, know, you should not use this for production this is just for testing and debugging um, but what this is going to do is this is going to repeatedly every time we make a change to our application uh, automatically re-render the application uh, as a production bundle so it's going to do aot it's going to do um, a lot of the things we can expect uh, but one of the things you'll notice here is that the bundle size is actually too big. And so this is because of the live reload functionality. It actually includes a bunch of other things. So we're seeing 313 KB here. Whereas if you just did an ng build dash dash prod, um, you would see that this bundle size is much, much smaller. So while we let this run in the background, what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our angular.json file, because this is where we do our bundle budget configuration. We're going to go directly into the production configuration because um, in general you don't really care about development it's going to be much bigger it's it's going to be uh, not really something you can do something about um, what we can do here is we can add the budgets key and now the budgets key takes an array of budgets and so the budget that we're going to be building here is going to be of type initial so you can see there's a bunch of options here you can budget all of your files all of the scripts uh, you can say that any individual file or any bundle, um, but I think the one that we care most about and the one that users care most about is definitely the initial because all of the other bundles can be lazy loaded, they can be code split, all those sorts of things, but the initial bundle, the user has to pay for. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up both a maximum warning of, uh, typically I would do about 2 meg here, but I'm just going to for now say 100 KB just so we see some warnings, and then let's uh, give it a maximum error of be 500 KB so that we are going to break that in just a second here. And this is JSON, so you got to get all the commas correct. Um, and so we saw from our production build that we just did that a normal out of the box kind of hello world Angular application is around uh, 172 main, and then we've got around 60K of polyfills. So uh, not the smallest application. Ivy is going to make this much smaller, um, but there's actually a lot packed into this, right? So you've got all of the power of Angular baked in. You've got all the polyfills to work on older browsers, um, which you can kind of comment a bunch of those out if you are shipping only on newer browsers. So let's just take a, a tiny look at that. So uh, for example, if you want to manage the polyfills, uh, you can go into the polyfill.ts file here. And you can see that uh, by default, we're including ES7 Reflect, which you don't actually need if you're doing a production build. Um, so if we commented that out and we did a rebuild, um, you're going to see that that main bundle size is going to drop. And now, now that we've added in these bundle budgets, we're going to start seeing warnings every time we do a production build. So uh, this bundle size is too big. So our 100 KB budget, which is much too small, uh, but we've exceeded it by 111 KB. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of slowly add things in to show off how bundle sizes change as you add different dependencies and how budgets can help uh, you understand that. So uh, let's go ahead and turn back on this polyfill and let's go a little bit further. Let's turn on all of the IE 9, 10, and 11 polyfills. So we're going to go way back when and do kind of all of these things. And so you'll note that I am adding a couple polyfills uh, that don't come even with the base install. So we're going to want to install classless.js. 
So we're gonna say yarn add classless JS, and then we're also going to add the web animations, uh, which only is needed if you're using the animation builder. But uh, we're gonna ignore that for just a second and just add them to uh, increase the size of our bundle. So we'll add both of these dependencies into our application. And now when we do an ng build dash dash prod, we're gonna see that this bundle size is much bigger than our original 100 KB budget. Uh, and while I don't think we're actually gonna exceed our 500 KB uh, error, we're gonna see that uh, just adding all of the extra polyfills, uh, add something like, uh, yeah, we went up from 111, so we added almost another 109 KB, uh, just adding polyfills all the way back to IE9. So as always, if you can not ship IE9 support, if you if your user base does not need those sorts of capabilities, definitely consider that because otherwise you're making all of your users pay for those polyfills. So next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and turn on Angular Material and the animations. So I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, ng add at Angular slash material. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna install the material project uh, and it's going to automatically only turn on two things for me by default. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's going to turn on the animations. And so animations are actually one of the, the biggest parts of uh, my bundle here now. So if we take a look at our, uh, where is our app module, here we go. Uh, we can see that it's imported the browser animations module. And then in addition to that, it's added to our angular.json, we've got the CSS from the pre-built theme. So the indigo pink theme is coming in. Uh, and one thing to note is that that indigo pink theme includes all of the CSS for all of the Angular Material components. So there is a way, if you take a look at the theming guide on the Angular Material website, you can see that they actually show you how to uh, only pull in the CSS for the components you're using, uh, but we're showing off kind of bigger bundles right now. So let's go ahead and do an ng build dash prod and we're gonna see how big this bundle is. All right, so we're up to around 456 KB um, just with Angular Material, uh, the CSS for Angular Material, the browser animations module, and then all of those polyfills. So let's go ahead and now add in another um, library that um, an Angular developer might use very commonly, such as the router module. So we'll import that from at Angular slash router. And then just importing it in ES6 is not enough because uh, that would actually be shipped or that would be stripped away by tree shaking. So we actually need to go ahead and import it so that we add it to the dependency injection system. Um, and now when we do a build, um, I'm expecting that the bundle size is now going to exceed our error warning or our error limit. And now because our bundle is more than 500 KB, our initial bundle is 500 KB, um, we'll see that uh, it will actually build, see that it's too big and then kind of refuse to output it. So. Uh, instead of succeeding our ng build dash prod like it normally does, um, it will actually now error out. And so this is a really nice way of saying, hey, uh, let's let's be very aware and very conscious of our budget sizes. Um, you probably shouldn't set that at 500 KB. I think a more uh, reasonable limit would be somewhere around two meg and five meg, um, but it really does depend on your user base. So maybe we warn it two meg, maybe let's warn it one meg. Uh, and we error out at five meg because uh, it's at about five megabytes in terms of the initial bundle size where things like Chrome are gonna start throwing out uh, warnings to the user if they have data saving on. Um, and so it's, it's very important to be aware of the uh, size of your application because even if the user's not being warned, even if uh, you're not exceeding kind of this math theoretical maximum limit of what you should be sending down to the browser, uh, your user does pay for this time, right? So they pay for it every time they load, they pay for the CPU, they pay for the power and battery on their phone, all those things, um, they end up being a cost of visiting your application. And so by making your bundles smaller, uh, you're actually doing a ton of uh, benefit to your users uh, and really making them more likely to enjoy your application, more likely to come back. So with that, we have now uh, added a very useful budget to our Angular application. Uh, and we've also taken a quick look at some of the things that can kind of increase the size of your uh, bundle. So if you're interested in uh, 
understanding a little bit more about this uh, bundle size, maybe you, you've already been building out an application, you're not sure what's attributing to that bundle size overall, what you can do is you can do a, a production build and let's turn on source map. And so what will this will do is this will output the normal JavaScript file, uh, but it'll also for every JavaScript file output a .map file that will tell us the source and the origin of that bundle size. Um, and I find this to be really a, a useful thing to understanding budgets or to understanding bundle sizes. This is actually the number one step that I make to developers that are trying to increase the uh, initial load performance of their application is understanding the uh, bundle that you're putting together and what you're putting out to the user. So uh, this is it's just a small bug that was just recently fixed. Uh, we should be ignoring those map files. Um, but if I go into the dist folder for my application, I can see all of the JavaScript right next to map files. Now, if I use a tool like Source Map Explorer, so I can say yarn global add, source map explorer um, this will just give me a source map explorer command line tool that i can use to point at these source maps so source map explorer and then we're going to point it at our main js bundle uh, and this is going to pop open a browser and then in that browser we can see here's animations adding about 73 kb to my bundle here's router adding about 67 kb um, and then you've got the kind of more normal pieces of Angular. And so if you're pulling in a lot of RxJS, if you're pulling in custom component libraries, you can see all of those things as part of your bundle and you can understand all of the things that you're making your user pay for. So with that, hopefully you can make smaller, uh, more performant applications for your users. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much.